All right, welcome back to the second part of One Man's Faith today. We're looking at prayer, but today I'm going to look at the topic of God is King, and, and, and stay with me because you'll understand why here in just a little while. We just looked at Isaiah 44. And God said He's going to pour out blessing upon His people. And He says, they're even, going to be, they're even going to say, I am the Lord's. And they're going to write on their hand, I belong to Jesus, or I belong to the Lord. Okay? And He closes it in verse 6 by saying, Thus says the Lord, the King. I told you, circle that word, the King. The King of Israel and His Redeemer. Now, go over to Jeremiah 10. Jeremiah 10, starting again with verse 1. Hear the word which the Lord speaks to you, O house of Israel. Thus says the Lord, do not learn the way of the nations, and do not be terrified by the signs of the heavens, although the nations are terrified by them. Listen, this is, this is somewhere really that the church has gotten into, and we need to get away from it and out of, and out of it. And that is learning the way of the world, the nations. I know I've said this a gazillion times, but I've, I'm going I'm to continue to say it because we've got to grasp hold of this. We do not work the same way the world does, whether it's financially or in dealing with health or in dealing with people we know. Our way, God's way, is totally different different from the way of the world. And we need to see that. And this is what he's saying here. Do not learn the way of the nations. In other words, don't walk the way they walk. And don't be terrified by the signs of the heavens. You know, all these things are happening now. You know, they've got a, a show coming out, uh, was it in August, uh, about an asteroid headed for Earth. And they're trying to conceal the fact that it's coming. You know, you know, we have all these things. That might, they've even had uh, 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 news articles about there is an asteroid coming toward Earth. Can I say, well, duh. If, if you'll read Revelation, you'll see that, yes, there is something. Now, it's kind of talked spiritually, but there is a part in uh, Revelation that says that uh, time will be cut by a third. Well, for time to be cut by a third, that means the earth has to spin up. And the only way I know, or one of the ways that it could, is if an earth, uh, a meteor or something strikes the earth, causing it to spin faster. Now, hey, if you're a Christian, I don't believe we have to worry about these things. This is going to be happening during, during the millennial, I mean, not the millennial time, the, um, the seven-year end time period, okay? All right, we don't have to worry about that because we're not going to be there. And I think you'll see that here in just a minute, too. We're not going to be there. But things, you know, these are things that the world and even us, oh, I almost hate to say it. We believe that the government is doing things and causing us to be sucked in to, uh, well, I'll just come out. We're teaching, I'm not, but there, there are those that believe that the, that the government is putting out chemtrails. In other words, they're purposely putting out chemicals into the air through airplanes. That's the way of the world. That's, you know, you know that's, that's, uh, that's being terrified of things that people just talk about like they really know it. And I'm, you know, you know, I'm sorry. I don't see anything like that. But Neil, if you look up, you'll see those trails. Well, those are called contrails. 
that's what happens when the hot air of the engine comes out of the engine and strikes the cold air. Listen, when you're up at 35,000 feet, you're at like negative 30 to negative 50 degrees below zero. So when that hot air, and it is hot, comes out from those engines and strikes that, yeah, it's going to form those what we call contrails. Now, some believe somehow that the government is putting chemicals. I can't buy that. I can't buy that. Uh, and I, I, we just we've been taken by too many conspiracies, and and conspiracy theories. And yes, there are things the government has done, and 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 you know it's. It's a pity, but I'm going to tell you, part of that's because we, you and me as Christians, aren't praying the way that we should be. People say, well, the earth is going to hell in a handbasket. Things have just got to get worse. They've got to get worse because that's what the Bible teaches. Well, yes, but a lot of what they try to base it on and part of it is on uh, what Jesus said in Matthew 24, a lot of that is going to happen during that end time period. It, it, it doesn't, listen, how can the kingdom of God be at hand if things are going to go bad to bad to bad? You see, our influence should be that we can pull people out of the world and bring them into the kingdom of God. And that's our job. Jesus said the kingdom of heaven is at hand. As you go preach saying the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Go therefore into all the world, baptize in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Teach them to observe all that I've commanded you. And I will be with you always. You see, yeah, things will get, things are appearing bad, but I'm going to tell you part of that again is because we have not been praying. Jesus said, Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Now, how is it in heaven? That's what you and I are to be bringing to earth. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth, in Barump, as it is in heaven. And that's what we need to be praying. Lord Jesus, bring your kingdom. Lord, may there not be, may, may cancer be obliterated from Barump. May, may, may healings prevail. May your spirit be so heavy over Pahrump that, 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 that people are touched without a word being, served, being said. This is what we should be praying. This is what he told us to pray. Wow, how did I get there? What did I do? Okay, all right. So King, oh, I know, <laughs> I know what it was now. Being terrified by the signs, okay? It says, do not learn the way of the nations. This is verse 2 of Jeremiah 10. Do not learn the way of the nations and do not be terrified by the signs of the heavens. Although the nations are terrified of them, for the customs of the people are delusion because it is wood cut from the forest, the work of the hands of a craftsman with a cutting tool. They decorate it with silver and with gold. They fasten it with nails and with hammers so they cannot teeter. It's talking about their idols they make. You know, anything made by you and me in any resemblance of anything doesn't, isn't anything. <laughs> but that was, you know, you know, you know, we, we even make crosses and we worship them. That's stuff made by hand. No. Now, yes, you know, it's, you know, it, 
It's a symbol we see everywhere, especially on a church, to signify that it is empty and that we serve a risen Savior. But when we start to work, and you know, some of them even have, the, even have Jesus hanging on it. Listen, Jesus is no longer hanging on that cross. He is resurrected. Hallelujah. He's not on that cross. And yet there are some people that worship that. See, even, the, even I believe he, I believe this, this is part of what he's saying here. Listen, it's because, it's because we made it out of wood or, or whatever, and we decorate it with silver and gold, and we fasten it with nails so that it doesn't fall over like a scarecrow in a cucumber field, are they? And they cannot speak. They must be carried because they cannot walk. Do not fear, for they can do no harm, nor can they do any good. There is none like thee, O Lord. Thou art great, and thy name, and great is thy name, in might. Who would not fear thee, O king? Circle that. Verse 7. O king of the nations, indeed, it is thy due. For among all these wise men of the nations and all of their kingdoms, there is none like thee. But they are altogether stupid and foolish in their discipline of delusion. Their idol is wood. Beaten silver brought from Tarshish and gold from Euphaz and the work of a craftsman and all the hands of the goldsmiths. Violet and purple are their clothing. They are all the work of a skilled man. But the Lord is the true God. He is the living God and the everlasting King. At His wrath, the earthquakes and the nations cannot endure His indignation. Here are two passages. There are many more. I just want you to see. God is King. All right? Now, we sometimes say, yeah, he, yeah, He's King. He's up there. He's King up there. You know, and, and we don't consider the fact that he's king down here. Matter of fact, we just, I just read, he's, uh, he is the king of the nations. Our God is king. All right, think about that for a few minutes. Take a break, get a cup of coffee. I'll be right back. <laughs> 